Can we switch to the laptop? Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Noah Snavely from Cornell University, and I'm interested in using the distributed camera to help us better understand and visualize our world. So what do I mean by the distributed camera? I mean all those millions and millions of photos that are being uploaded uh, all the time to the web by people around the world. So we're really living today in the world of exapixel image data. There's hundreds of billions of photos available online, you know, different types of photos, street view images, aerial images, and billions and billions of photos uploaded all the time by you know, tourists taking photos and uploading them to sites like Flickr and Facebook. So it's really become the case that the internet is this unprecedented, unprecedented living visual record of our world. Every city, every landmark, every important event have been captured many, many times, as well as lots of unimportant things like cats and so on. Um, so stepping back for a second, Photos have always been used as a very effective way of communicating information about our world in science and in, in other fields. So for instance, how are glaciers changing over time? But we're seeing this uh, data source multiplied a billionfold, and we can really think about this distributed lens on our world, this distributed camera by virtue of all these people taking photos. And what can we do with this data source? So imagine all of the photos, millions of photos ever taken of the city of London. So here's a few uh, scraped from Flickr. Uh, what can we do with these photos? You could, well, you can imagine creating the ultimate visual experience of the city, being able to show it from any viewpoint, from any time of day, uh, through this, these photo collections. You can imagine modeling changes over time. How is the city changing? How are, people, how, is peop how are people using the city differently over time? And you can imagine using these images for science. Can you measure things like how is the onset of spring changing in different places around the world uh, from year to year? In developing countries, you can imagine using cell phone cameras to help monitor things like crop growth and soil erosion. But the real problem here is that this is an extremely massive un and uncalibrated data source. We're talking about millions of different cameras um, you know, with unknown viewpoint, unknown times. How are we going to make sense of all of this data? So I work on developing new computer graphics and computer vision techniques to help us make sense of this data. So here's an example. Here's a set of photos uh, scraped from Flickr of the you know, beautiful medieval city of Dubrovnik in Croatia. Um, so the computer vision techniques I've developed can take photos like this and reconstruct 3D geometry automatically. So here's a 3D model of the city, a 3D point cloud I'll show a, a fly through. We're flying through this point uh, rendering of the city automatically reconstructed by scraping those photos and analyzing them. So you can see uh, different buildings around the city itself. You can see all these wireframe pyramids. These are places where people stood and took a picture, and we reconstructed those locations automatically. So you can see the distribution of photos around the city, these black wireframe pyramids. People take, cities along, take photos along the city walls, down the streets, and so on. And so this is a much more structured representation, this geometry, for understanding this uh, set of photos. Uh, so to give you another example, here's a a uh, quick demo. Uh, so here I've loaded up uh, an interface with a reconstruction of the Statue of Liberty. We're looking at it from the top. You see all these photos arranged around it. Uh, but when I click on a photo, you'll see that I can zoom into the scene, and photos will start to appear. So what's going on is I'm rendering the scene through the lens of all these photos on the internet, uh, these hundreds of photos of the Statue of Liberty downloaded and reconstructed. So I can move around, and uh, different photos appear. I can zoom in, and a, and a high resolution image of the face appears. Um, zoom back out. I can also move around in 3D. So as I move around, it's showing different people's photos from different viewpoints. And so I get this nice sense of what this, you know, what this space looks like um, by virtue of kind of this coherent blending of all these different photos together, even though they're taken by you know, many different tourists at many different times. Um, OK. So this software is already being used by Microsoft in a tool called Photosynth, where you can um, view your own photos in 3D. Uh, it's also being used by ecologists and other scientists as a low-cost 3D sensor. So with that, I'm excited about using this massive data source to understand our world, um, and I hope to talk to you about it later. Thank you.